one. Welcome to Check Out My Dad Pod, a podcast by a dad with dads and for dads. My name is Mike Wickett, and in the span of a year, I went from a father of zero to a father of three. So after 20 years on the radio, I hung up my headphones to stay at home with my kids. And I'm here on this podcast to talk about it with you. And inside the Cost Headphone Studios, this is Check Out My Dad Pod. It's another episode of Check Out My Dad Pod. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, coming up, we're going to have a real fun conversation a little bit later about my vasectomy. Yes, I baby-proofed myself, so this didn't happen anymore after three babies in less than a year. But our guest dad of the week is someone that, if you are in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you are very familiar with our next guest because he is one of the biggest Brewers fans out there, and you hear him on 1250 AM, the fan before and after every game. You may know him as Tim Allen, but I know him as Tim Jandrowski, Tim, thank you so much for coming on, my friend. I appreciate it. How in the heck are you? Oh, my goodness. It is great to be with you again. Now, we've, we've uh, uh, our paths have crossed uh, many years ago, but I, I am stunned at the <laughs> dad and maturity of you, my friend. That is That is awesome. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I can't imagine that when I left the fan back in 2016, that the next time you and I would chat, I, I don't know if we've spoken since I left. I don't, I can't remember. I, I don't remember the last three years. I mean, the last, the last one year for me has been absolutely a blur because uh, three babies will do that to you. And being a stay at home dad will do that to you. But I'm going to bet that when, when I left the fan and I went to Kansas city for a bit, I don't think you said, you know, the next time I'm going to talk to wicket, He's going to have three kids. He's going to be a stay-at-home dad. Never would have thought that. And and you know what? It 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 makes you clearly and and we all realize this as adults, man. That that it it puts a different perspective on your life, Mike. It it really does. And and you know you don't fret some of the things you used to get all all tithered up with. And you know and and now it's you have something really truly to to live for but i never thought you know radio guys are like that though they they come and go as you know and formats change and all these things and then you look at these guys and you know you you, you can't be so quick to judge people like that and and they mature and they grow up and in your case you know a fine upstanding young man of the community <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bar community <laughs> Yes. yes, but you can still do that. See, that's the thing. You can say there's a balance. And, and that's that's the one thing I've learned, man, is, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's a right time and a place for everything. And, and you know, being a being a parent puts a little bit of pressure on you, but it is a balance. I still fly off to Vegas two or three times a year and have a big uh, drunken blowout and gamble and, and do all that. But then when it, it comes time to time to do your homework. <laughs> time to you know what i mean time to, hey, to to clean up that 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 mess in there you know that i tell you um there's there's things you figure out mike and 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 with the little ones you will figure out um that there's a just a delivery that you have as a parent <clears throat> for example i'll just give you one quick example when you say my son's name is ty as you know uh ty Get in here and pick that bowl of cereal. You're done with your cereal. Get that in the kitchen. You know better than that. Okay? You can do it that way and check the results. But you can also say, hey, Ty, dude, you got a second? Comes waltzing in. Say, hey, can you grab that cereal bowl and pull it, put it where it goes? It's such a huge difference. And, and to lay the groundwork like that, man, that had helped me a lot. Instead of every little thing being a battle, <laughs> because believe me when when your kids get that oh 12 13 14 15 age there'll be battles pick pick your battles well, tim, cereal bowl tim, is that problem. tim two of them are girls so i'm gonna have no idea what to do with an angry 13 year old girl i got nothing for that i have so much respect for for parents with multiples beyond belief we know as did, i just had the one so Man, just just to have multiples, I can't imagine how you split that up. And then I look back at, you know, my siblings and I've got five, four sisters and, and, a, and a late brother. Um, but, you know, as kids, it was at Christmas time. You're always eyeballing the, the the stack of presents for my sister. Well, you count them. You literally count them. And then you go, 
well, I, they got seven. I got seven, so make sure they had seven. You know, it's things like that. But multiple, you got my respect, man. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, I, I think what you said in uh, one of your answers is going to be the theme for this conversation because this is to talk about – I mean, normally I would have you on, we'd be talking about the Brewers. But we're going to have that conversation maybe next spring when baseball gets back to normal. You said the word balance, and I think that's yeah. so important for – every parent out there and for dads to have that kind of balance like you said whether it's the bowl of cereal on the ground or it's taking those trips to las vegas or whatever i feel like balance is such an important thing to have where i mean you have ty you have your one son who helped us set up this zoom call and sure. what is ty about 40 years old now how old is your son i'm, I'm not good at this is he 17 18 24 24 i am so bad at guessing kids <laughs> ages yeah. Um, I imagine that that rela- boy, he's 24. I should have asked you this in the pre-interview. Uh, that is amazing to me. I feel like that balance is so important when they're in their in their teenage years, in their preteen years. Obviously, he's 24. He can go do his own thing right now. But what was it like for for you raising a baby boy and trying to balance your Playboy lifestyle, Tim Allen, Tim Janowski, uh, yeah, and also being know- a dad? I mean, you're, yeah, it's a, it's a great question because I mean, it's, it's all trial and error. It was for me for, for a while, but it's, it's weird because you say, well, I'm going to go out after work and do this, that, and the other thing. And then you catch yourself and you're like, Oh, got to take care of the, you want to though. And that's the reward out of all of this. It's, it's people look at it like, ah, I can't go out. I got to, and then this, this bugs me too. I have to babysit. Wait a second babysit your own kid i mean it's like no you you want to spend time with them they'll believe me and and i'm sure you've heard this a lot on on your podcast man that the the time goes by so quick and and it just does it's it's amazing how it goes by how is he 24 years old i feel like just the other day i was watching this the the thing on fox six with you and tom pippins and the key was like eight like how the hell is he 24 I know. And, and so it goes by so quick and, and you, you reflect on, on all of that and you say, well, how did I do? How did I do? And, and where, where's the success scale? How do you measure this? Is he out, you know, getting arrested and, and, you know, smashing up cars and, and doing all this? No. And the reward here for me, Mike, I got to say, and in all sincerity is that he is a far better human being than I am. <laughs> 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 he, he is. I hear it all the time. You raised a great kid. He's a good boy. He's, you know, he's, he's you know, he'll help out here, or do some errands or do some running for grandma or whatever it might be. And here I'm thinking back, hmm, at what was I doing at 24? You, you know, you, I mean, yeah. th- that's that, those are stories for a different podcast because okay. you told me some of those stories, you oh, know, yeah. like when you would fly into Detroit, for example, you've told me a couple of those interesting sure. tales that's for a different podcast not for the family podcast here but yeah. i do want to talk about that you know when did your life change but was it before ty was born was it the first couple of years like when did you going back to our question about balance when did you have to sort of start to, to yeah. tip the scale yeah and that came at like when you know when they're little babies and you know, they poop and they, you know, they eat and that's, then they sleep and that's about it. And then they start, you know, communicating a little bit with their eyes or with their smiles or things like that. And, but then when they get to the point where every second you have to kind of know what's up, you, <laughs> it's to the point where you turn your head and they're gone. Yep. In your own home, they're gone. And you're like, oh boy, okay, let's go check this out. Let's go on an adventure. Let's see what the child is doing here. That to me was when it clicked that, I won't say pressure, Mike, because we're, we're all as adults and, and, and as uh, parents, there's a certain degree of pressure because we want our kids to be good and fine upstanding young kids. But uh, that's when it really clicks clicked in for me at least was that when when they were the maintenance part of it and it's it's like and it's fun because he'd be in there with a tube of toothpaste or something and you're like man you were just here 40 seconds ago how did you get into the cupboard in that other room over there it's a quick education 
super quick education, man. But that's, to answer your question, that's when it was like, okay, it's got to be parent time, and then it's got to be Tim time. Parent time comes first. It, it definitely does. What a balance, though. Yeah, I, I have absolutely noticed that. I mean, Tim, as you know, I used to live a little bit more of a carefree lifestyle, uh, it, and that that wasn't just exclusive to Milwaukee. That carried over into Kansas City when I was down there for a couple of years. Um, and, and, and it's weird because since I've been a stay at home dad, uh, this pandemic hit and Mm -hmm. people say, Mike, what do you think of being a stay at home dad? What do you think of living in Des Moines? And I say, I don't know. It it could be Boise outside. I have absolutely no idea. So it, it was, it's, it was a huge change for me to, to do that, to make that life change, to go from fun guy to parent mode like that. That to me was one of the biggest changes. Forget about the career, the radio thing. Being a dad all of a sudden became the most important thing in the world. It did. And all those other things. And it's not that they're not important. You know, it's it's not that, you know, you and you and mom time is, is not important because, well, you know, you, you need to watch football for your job or you need to watch baseball or get some time with your with your wife or whatever. It's that those things just in a, in a pecking order of of true genuine life they just come underneath the child they just do and the hands-on approach is is what it's all about we see you know the horror stories mike of of a lot of kids getting in trouble and and i feel for those parents i i do and not to say that you know my son didn't have a little riffraff here and there because you know sometimes you might be a little more concerned if if they didn't kind of test the waters a little bit and sure. push the envelope you know that that might be concerning too if they just internalize everything um so you want to watch for that too but uh, you you're you're right on that these other things will come second and you want them to and that's the crazy thing i never thought that you know my situation it was a divorce situation but you know i had placement also so you, you throw in placement and then trying to work at night, as you, as you mentioned, the Brewer stuff, mainly the baseball games are at night. So I got daycare to, you know, worry about at night and things like that. But and that all came, that all came with the territory. It, uh, I, I just overjoyed still, still. And even as, as an adult child, still overjoyed with being a parent. For those that uh, are listening to this podcast and have no idea of uh, Tim's story, Tim is blind. Tim can't see. So we have gone half about halfway into this interview or so without revealing, without the big reveal, that sure. you you lost your sight. You used to be able to see, and, sure. and over, over a period of time it was gone. So I imagine that raising your son has to be difficult. I mean, it's difficult for those of us that have vision, but I imagine that's an extra challenge that you didn't bargain for. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and it did require a lot of uh, adapting, if you will. It required a lot of creativity. I mean, it really did. I mean, you, you've seen me at work and, and I do things a little bit different to get from point A to point B than you would on your shows uh, there in Kansas City or in Milwaukee or Detroit and, and all the places you've worked. Um, I don't, the outcome, the output, the end result to me is where it's at. We all have these certain things we go through, we, we all do. And, and the, the, by no stretch of the imagination, do I ever want to get into a, a match of comparing challenges with people? Because, you know, look, there's far more people right now affected by COVID than, you know, Tim, you know, doing a podcast or doing a radio show. I mean, come on. I mean, they, they, they've lost loved ones or, or cancer has stricken people. And there's all sorts of myriad of things that, that could go on. I just looked at it as um, you do what you got to do. And, and even as a parent with, with all your faculties or with full health, you do what you got to do. There's, what's the other alternative? I mean, that's the way I looked at it too. Like, what, what are you going to do then if you don't work? Uh, yeah, that's not going to be good. I need, I need to work. Plus, plus you love it. But I, I was really lucky, uh, to find a job that number one, I love, uh, but number two that I, well, some people say I'm good at, but nonetheless, that, that I really enjoy. You haven't been fired yet. So, I mean, you're doing okay. <laughs> what was, was there, um, years at this one? Yeah. Was there, was there a series of conversations you had with your son about, you know, saying, Hey, this is my situation. And then I assume as he got older, he, brought, he took on a more responsibility because it was just the two of you. I know you mentioned your divorce, and we'll talk about that in a second. But 
I mean, he kind of had to really be forced into a role that most kids don't. He was. And I'll tell you the tipping point in that, Mike. It's funny you bring that up. Thought about this the other day. So, you know, you want to read to your kids. I think it's tremendously important. Um, so you grab whatever books you can and, and have them put sight and sound and, and those types of things together. And the words on paper are, are meaningful and things like that. So I would grab a book or two. I'd get a, by, by someone who could see, I would say, give me, a, give me an update on what this is. This is a book about zoo animals. And the, I'd memorize the first five or six animals uh, as you turn the pages, all right? So he would then grab a book out of the blue and uh, I'd be like, ooh, shoot. I don't, yeah, this book I didn't prep on. <laughs> Okay, so he would he would grab my finger and put it on like the, the penguin's face or something. And he would say, penguin there. Okay, so the tipping point would be my father was over and and he grabbed a book and jumped up on grandpa's lap and grabbed grandpa's finger to put it on the penguin. And so that being said, I had to then sort of expand the communication to say that, you don't have to do that for everybody. <laughs> That's, this is just a dad thing. So you can help dad out with that stuff, but you know, mom's okay, grandpa's all right, grandma's all right, your aunt's all, whatever. So that was the tipping point in that. That's that's funny you brought that up. That's really weird. You mentioned uh, the divorce and, and obviously the role of a father changes uh, a little bit when the parents split up. My parents are divorced and um, you know, I, the things were very different for me growing up than what, you know, a traditional family would, would be my wife's parents, you know, together for 50 years. Uh, what did that do in terms of your role being a dad? Did, did that change anything between you and Ty? I, I wanted, should I ask Ty that question? <laughs> I guess that, that would be a good question for him if you ever expand it to, to the child part of it. But um, yeah, there were some, some, it's tough, it's rough. And it's like my parents, like yours, Mike, um, or like your wife's parents, um, they've been married 60 years, 59 years. Wow. And, you know, you see that and you applaud that and you see that it, it is, um, it's the odds are against you these days, it, it seems. And, you know, mine didn't, didn't work out, but it, it did provide those explanations. And, and, you know, honestly, um, during all that, I did get some, some help with that. I got some, some professional advice with how do I answer questions of, you know, why isn't mom home? Uh, where, why isn't, you know, she taking me to school or, you know, where's mom tonight for dinner and things like that. There's a particular way to answer those questions and it's challenging. And, and, but, you know, the end result is as, as the advice I got, these kids are far more resilient and i know it's a cliche than you think they're they're not eggshells they they're, they're tough they're they're tough kids they can understand will they go through some uncertainty for sure in in that situation but i always wanted to be involved it was and and i don't want to be a, a jerk about it but from the word go on the divorce i was gonna uh fight to the end of time to have a minimum of 50% with my son. And that was it. There was not gonna be this every other weekend, this uh, one day a week and, and things like that. It was going to be 50% or I was gonna still be in that battle. Even <laughs> as a 24 year old, I would have still battled that thing. Did, but, you, uh, did you get 50%? Because I know how hard it is for dads. One of the first interviews I've done on the podcast, our buddy Dave Hero, the wrestling king of Milwaukee, yeah. he, he fought tooth and nail and got full custody of his son, rightfully so, because and you can listen to that podcast. I don't want to go into her demons, but he, I know how hard it is in the state of Wisconsin to be the full time or to get 50 50 because for whatever reason, dads aren't treated fairly in the Badger state. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you hear it in my buddies and 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 I've been, uh, you know, the, the, the bar stool counselor a lot on those things for sure because I, I went through it and and i think it's you know it's more important to work with the the ex if you will to work with them and what is best for the child so in my situation was he had a little corner house four blocks away from his school he was about four just going to preschool and things like that i thought it was very important mike to have safety stability and security 
And, and I just thought that that was the, the way to go. In other words, when he wakes up in that regiment of breakfast, of straightening up your room, of going to school, that to me was vital. And, and that, that right there, I said, hey, whatever you want, wh whatever you want, if we can have this, at least the Monday through Friday mornings, we'll work around any other thing you want to work. Because I think that's extremely important. Uh, for the kid to have that, just that regimen is so important. In my situation, and I'm not a professional, as you know, but you know that to me was important. And, and I, th I thought we did a good job and she understood. She was in a different, different place in her life at that time. It was uh, maybe a little more partying than was appropriate um, for, you know, for, for being a parent. And, and again, we go back to that balance and I have no problem with partying, believe me. I know that. But, <laughs> tomorrow night I will be, yeah, uh, I will be several drinks in, but um, it's important to work with the significant other or ex as it were and do what's right for the kid. It's so difficult though, when you start arguing and you start ticky tack fouls here and there. And, and, and that is just is so unfortunate and it's so challenging to zip your lip. And, and even I lost it a few times, ad admittedly, like you, you can't do this. It's not right. But it worked out for me in that regard that we, we really thought it was important for the stability. And after that, whether it was a monetary thing, I mean, fine, it's worth money to me. You know, again, the, the money's not the issue that the, the safety and, and happiness is. Tim, I want to go back to when you were growing up. What was your relationship like with your dad? And, and did you always want to have kids? Did you always want to be a dad? It's funny. I told my mother at 18 years old um, when, when I moved out. And, and I said, you know what, Ma? I, I want to have a kid, but I don't want to be married. <laughs> it's, it's strange. And maybe it was said in, in jest a little bit, but... You know, at that time, Mike, I don't know if this is true, and I've, I've really never talked to other parents about it, but maybe I can ask you. Um, I knew what my kid looked like before he was born, which is maybe a strange thing, and, and maybe maybe I'm loony, but I knew what he looked like. And, you know, I saved my eyesight just long enough to see him, to see him at, at, at an adolescent, at, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. So... I, I did hang out of that and it was right. I was right. I knew it. I knew what he looked like. I knew the blonde hair. I knew the blue eye. I knew the smile. I knew it all. It's very strange. Very, very, very weird. Um, so I, I just, that, that part of it to me, I look at my dad and say, well, do I want to have a bunch of kids? I didn't envision me having a ton of kids. I, I didn't. I, I probably knew I wouldn't. Um, because, you know, as adults, we know what it's like to, well, we know what it takes to get someone pregnant. So I knew sort of that I wasn't going to have a handful, but, but my dad did have a handful and he, he had to slice up his time. He had to pie piece it and he had six kids and, and all in kind of the same area of range, but one baby, I was, a junior in high school and my youngest sister was born so there's a gap there wow but, so he was he was already to the finish line he could see the finish line and yeah. said let's start this race all over again one more and you know she is uh she's what now you know about 40 and and so he worked a lot he worked a daytime factory job he worked at night as a janitor at, uh, at a, a local college carthage college he was their nighttime custodian just to pick up extra money so the, the running around a <clears throat> ball practice and and baseball and football games and things like that that was all mom that was all mom and and so but but we all understood it when it was weekend time it was dad time that's for sure it was the you know, remember that volkswagen commercial of the, the the dad that just could not throw a ball that was my dad <laughs> <laughs> but we made it work we made it work uh, I know what a big sports fan you are because I know you host the Brewers pre and post on the fan, and, and I know that you uh, allegedly know something about fantasy football, although the results don't tend to live up to the reputation. <laughs> uh, was sports important for, for you to, to have Ty involved in that? Did, did he play sports growing up, whether it was Little League or high school or anything? 
Yeah. Oh gosh, that was uh, paramount. And, and it, it's put him, I think what sports does is it puts uh, these kids into uh, some accountability, some accountability to their teammates, to their coach and things like that, that, you know, we, we don't want to see the coaches rule by ironclad fist at all. Uh, us, us mama bears get a little discouraged about that sort of thing at times, but it, it is in, internally for children. They do have to be there when their teammates get there. So there's that peer accountability, if you will. I, I thought it was tremendously important. Um, not that the, the, you know, the baseball team won't end up at a party after the game on, on Saturday because they certainly did. And there were, there were their share of trying and experimentation with beers and such, but they were held uh, to, to the grindstone on you got to be at practice or maybe more, most importantly, were the grades, the academics, you had to have the academics and, and Ty, my son will tell you through his baseball stuff that he was a knucklehead. He was, he was a dum dum in, in high school that he should have worked harder. He did just enough, Mike, okay. because he was you know the, the jock or whatever. Um, but what it did to twofold, it, it gave them some peer accountability. And, and sometimes we can't connect like, like a coach can. Uh, a coach is just this objective source at times. Um, but what it also did was make him academically start looking for the future. And when you get a kid starting to look toward the future, that is a key, Mike. It, it is. Make them, you know, project out where they want to be in a year or two. And, and we did. Of course, they all want to play quarterback for the Packers or play ball for the, for the Dodgers or whatever. But, you know, to get there, you had to have the grades. And that, to me, was so important. Plus, you got, you know, that kid saved me a lot of money, Mike. <laughs> we, I, I'm telling you, we, we, <laughs> he, he got his college completely paid for through baseball. Really? And yeah. And, and, you know, he, he had to go and here just to come full circle on the academic route. He, he had to. The, the rule is if you're not a, a, an 18 ACT score, a division one can't give you college tuition and money. He had a 16. Oh. And he has, he has no problem telling me about this. So to circumvent that, the rule NCAA rule says that you have to either, either get your ACT to 18 or come up with a, uh, a two-year degree at a JUCO. So he went the JUCO route uh, Madison College in, in Madison, Wisconsin, worked his grades up, got his two-year degree, and then was given his scholarship to play at uh, NIU, Northern Illinois University, uh, where he got all his college paid for in a D1 program. It was, uh, you know, it was sweet. And, and it taught him, gosh, it taught him. But it started with the sports and it started with that accountability. We can interject that as parents, but you know, the accountability sometimes objectively is a little more heavy hitting. I was going to ask those who are listening on the podcast and not watching on the video don't see this, but I was like, why in the hell is Tim Allen? Why is Tim Jandrowski? Why is Tim wearing a, an NIU hat? But now I, it makes sense. <laughs> well, because I didn't take a shower this morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, he is 24 years old. What is he doing now? And, and what have you learned since, you know, going through all of this, through your situation with your wife, your condition, uh, his high school ways, his fighting his way to get into it to a great school like NIU. What's he doing, and what have you learned? Well, I did get help, and and I do have to credit a number of people. Um, you know, my folks obviously helped out, my family helped out, my girlfriend, my current uh, girlfriend here, my 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 gal that I'm going to grow old with. Um, she was a, a huge help and because I've been with her now over seven years. So it was at that time where it was high school. When I, when I met her, it was, uh, you know, our sons and she's got a son the same age, uh, juniors in high school. And so that was this parallel. I think that we kind of feeled our way through this thing. Um, you know, I had the, the jock portion of things and she had the academia, I mean, smarter than a whip at, the, at that the same age. So I, I did have some help, but, uh, you know, he's, like I said, he's just in demeanor. Uh, he loses control far less than I do. You would think it'd be the other way around, but I kind of go off on, you know, a brewer loss and why Craig counseled in bunt in the eighth inning and things like that, where he's just like, 
no, you got to look at it this way. So he's, he can be the voice of reason. He um, <clears throat> knew that his dream was going to be over for the big leagues um, in about his junior year of, of college where, you know, there's this weeding out process with all of us, with our dreams uh, at times that, you know, you fi it finally dawns on you. It's, okay, so he graduates, gets his uh, corporate communications degree, and, and now he's in a sales position at a place that is a plastic packaging place. So they have a medical side, they sell, you know, hand sanitizer bags and things like that, those Ziploc, those heavy duty Ziploc bags. And then there's a consumer side, which is a, you know, mainly food or maybe some other things, but um, he's in their sales staff. So he knows all about the word commission, Mike. <laughs> he's a quick learner on commission. Commission is where you go over the top. But like I said, a, a far better human being. And I've said it for, for a few years now. Just a, just a good dude. Uh, super proud. Well, I am glad that you didn't let him go into radio. That's the smartest decision I think you have made in his 24 years on this planet is not letting him try to get into the radio industry. And, I, and like, I'd like to think that we had an impact also on, on my girl's kids who, you know, like I said, she's, she, her youngest is, is Ty's age. And then a couple of years, three years older than that's 27 year old who is now uh, uh, a parent. And now, so by proxy, I am a grandpa. And, uh, you know, I'd like to think that we had an impact on that too. Very successful guys, you know, both in, one's in uh, law enforcement, actually both in law enforcement, one's head of security and the other is a, a, a police officer in Pleasant Prairie. So all of them very successful and including, uh, you know, my gal, which is, uh, you know, far, but I think you coined the phrase out kicked my coverage. Yeah, you did. I, if this is still the same woman from before I left Milwaukee, you have definitely out kicked your coverage, my friend. Yes. Yeah, same woman. And just a, a, a high end kind of professional and has expectations, but again, lets me do my thing too. So, you know, when I come stumbling in, you know, maybe a little lit up at one or two in the morning. <laughs> this is a family doing, podcast, Tim. <laughs> after doing a band gig, strumming my guitar, you know, <laughs> till, till one or two. Mm -hmm. And, and she, she knows that that's her balance too. So uh, there's a lot of credit to be thrown around. Very, very successful, uh, very successful kids for sure. Well, Tim, I appreciate it, man. This has been a really good chat. I've, I've had a lot of fun learning about Ty, learning about your story, learning about the last 24 years, uh, and even more than that. I, I thank you so much for coming on, my friend. Continued success. I want, I want to ask you something. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We, we talk about that tipping point where it really sets in that you are responsible, you are held accountable, uh, you are a teacher, you are a shoulder, you are emotional support, your academic support, your just life support for children. When for you with, with three did that hit? Um, well, the, when we had the first baby in January of 2019, we had daycare. And so I would take her when I was working at a radio station in Kansas City, I, you know, I would take her, I'd drop her off at daycare and then pick her up on the way home. And it was just her and I for a little bit until she would go to bed. Um, life didn't change all that much once she started sleeping through the night. Like when, you know how it is when they do the overnight feedings and you have to wake them up every two hours. That's when you realize you can't have that third or fourth beer. You can't have that extra glass of wine. You can't stay up to watch Saturday Night Live live. Yeah. Like that's out. Um when she started sleeping through the night until like 6 a.m., you know, we were 6, 6.30, things kind of felt a little more normal. Uh, you could have that extra beer or whatever. You could have yeah. a babysitter come over. Tim, I, COVID has, has wiped everything off the, the table, so we don't really know. But right. if Lee and I want to go out to eat right now, like we went out a couple of weeks ago, we need two babysitters. I mean, you can't just call Grammy, who's 75, to come over and watch three babies, one that's crawling, one that's walking, and one that can't move too well yet, but will. Like, you need all hands on deck. I think once we had the two and we moved to Des Moines and realized that we are not going to be able to just go out, you know, call a babysitter, have, have a friend come and sit, because now there's three of them. 
That's a great point. I didn't even think of that. I mean, it, we've got friends who are like, yeah, my daughter would love to be your babysitter. I'm like, does she have a friend? Not in that weird, creepy way, but like, does she have a friend? Because right. it's hard. Like, I'm at home with them all day, and it's me with the babies for 10 hours if I'm lucky. Like, right now, I'm watching a baby monitor as you and I are talking. Oh, man. Um, if, now, what happens when they all get ruffled up and they're all crying at the same time? I put two in those jumpy things that they can't get out of, and I go for a walk. I take myself out of the situation. I go get the mail or whatever. Uh, yeah. The even scarier question, Tim, is what happens when they all poop at the same time? And it feels like oh, you've God. just fumigated the living room. And it's like, oh, here we go. But I think that was the first time when when things really, really the first one was one thing. The first one was life changing, obviously, because now I had to care for something other than myself, which is tough because I'm a pretty selfish guy or I was. But when you add the other two at the same time and you need help, that's why we moved to Des Moines to be near her family. You can't do it on your own. You need the help. That was when everything changed. Like, Tim, I've never needed fantasy football more than 2020 and it has nothing to do with covid <laughs> right right no and, and, and those types of distractions you just come to cherish those little things but it, and again it's all okay it's because you want that other side as, as hectic as it can be you you do want the other side it's, right man I, I gotta say i'm super proud of you three three and you and lee doing your thing that's that's cool i, I mean i just envision you know, all the, all the, the Thanksgivings and the Christmases, and that's all ahead of you, man. Mm -hmm. That's super cool as kids. I mean, to have these, these kids run around now we have the grandbaby. Now I'm Peapaw is oh. apparently, but yes. Okay. Okay. That I mean, Peapaw could be something totally different. I think. <laughs> well, she calls me Poopaw sometimes, but, <laughs> um, but you know, even then all of that is in front of you, dude. I just, you are in for a really good ride. People it's, keep it's saying, cool. Tim, that uh, the days are long, but the years are short. Right now, it fe everything feels about where it's at. Like with Britain being 20 months, everything, it feels like it's been about 20 months. And with the twins, they just turned nine months this week. It feels a little, it doesn't feel like nine months, but... At some point, I'm going to look back and be like, how are my girls in high school? How is my son? Grad like, everybody keeps telling me that. And I know it's going to be a warp speed journey, which I take a lot of photos, but I feel like I'm not going to take enough. I agree. I agree. And, and to, for them to uh, see those things, I mean, that to me is family time, too. And, it, you know, I guess I guess to end on this note, um, we all, I, th I think, have made mistakes and I think over the years, uh, we're different people than we were at, at 18, 19, 21, as you said um, before, that you know things change a little bit. And, and if I could give just anybody ad advice with, with not just your family and your kids and everything, and I'm not mellowing in my old age, I can still be a jerk and still do business. Um, <laughs> but I, I will say, it doesn't cost you anything to be nice to someone. You know what I mean? Just stop judging people just be nice to people what is so damn wrong with that just stop you know prejudging and, and and assuming things for other people you don't know you don't even know someone and you're assuming immediately your guard is up i, I don't understand that at my age now maybe at 23 i, I might have thought a little bit different but I would just say be nice and I always end the show smile because the world smiles back. Sometimes when you smile these days, it's like, uh oh, what does this guy want? <laughs> no, I'm just kind of being nice. It's weird when you're nice to people and then they're like, why are you doing that? I mean, because that's, right. that's the way I was brought up. I was brought up to say hello to you on the street. I was brought up to hold the door for you. I was, I, I was brought up to get up. If an older person gets on the bus or the subway or the train, I was taught to get up at my age and people for whatever reason are, are too worried, weirded out by that. Yeah. I, it's unfortunate, but I, I'm still going to do it. I'm, I'm still going to do it to have a chat with the neighbor or to, you know, the, the neighbor's dog comes over here or my dog bites this neighbor dog, whatever, just be super nice. It's always, it doesn't have to be a fight every time you see the bill and you say, my uh, chicken strips were cold. So can you, pay for it. it's like come on guys just, just be nice. <laughs> well tim i never thought i'd end an interview with you this way um 
my twins have now woken up. I'm going to go get those babies. But, again, I thank you so much for coming on, man. We'll do it again. Hopefully we'll do it in the spring if we have baseball again and we can talk yeah. some brewers. But continued success to you, my friend. Thanks. Same to you, man. I'm proud of you.